Hey folks, you are listening to WPVM 103.7 FM in Asheville. You can listen online at WPVMFM.org. I'm Abby the Spoon Lady, and we're on Busker Broadcast, and we're kind of having a busy week in the Busker world here in Asheville. And well, we're here to tell you all about it, but most importantly, we're here to share with you some of the stories of some of the folks that busking affects. And uh, one of those folks would be uh, a Mr. Patrick Hamilton, which uh, is here with us at this moment. Hey. <laughs> Here, let's make sure we get your levels right here. So, uh, where, are you, where are you from? I'm uh, originally from New Mexico, but I spread myself between New Mexico and Texas. Denton, Texas, and Roswell, New Mexico. Um, so, but as far as Asheville, why are you, why are you here? Uh, so why are you in Asheville? Oh, uh, I'm in... Asheville because uh, I'm heading up to West Virginia. I'm trying to make another lap around the U.S. before I go to Europe. I've been traveling for four years and just... <laughs> All right, folks. Sorry, we're... Uh one of our microphones here isn't wanting to do what we want it to, so we'll just turn it off and use this other here mic. That's okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, it's not our it's not our fault. Sometimes these things happen. It's just the way the world works. Um, but for the most part, Patrick, uh, you came into town, kind of just wanting to learn about the busking scene here, right? Absolutely. I'm really interested in uh, busking. I've been playing guitar for three years now. Um, traveling the country for four and uh, so I kind of picked up busking as I went along um, playing guitar has been really great for me um, I'm really interested in uh, the Asheville scene and then there's some people in Portland too but uh, that I'm going to go see at the end of the summer but I'm really interested in like the ABC the Asheville, Asheville uh, Buskers Collective and the, <clears throat> how the buskers have a voice here and street performers all uh, the city listens to him, hopefully. <laughs> well, 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 you know, <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of a, a miscommunication going there. And uh, we will be talking about that coming up um, here during our second hour primarily. Um, so, folks, if you are interested in knowing what's going on with our politics, there there is, if you've been hearing the rumors, there is a big meeting coming up, which is June 22nd. And uh, we're going to be talking and discussing some new busker ordinances that city staff has devised. Um, I would like to say, and, uh, and you know, the official stance of the ABC is that we do not in any way, shape, or form support these ordinances. And that this is not, uh, these are not ordinances that we came up together with mm -hmm. the city staff in any way, shape, or form. And that's one of the interesting things about Asheville. Like I said, you have the ABC, and you have, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, I mean, I've heard people say you can uh, you can get something good to eat anywhere, you know. But uh, people come to Asheville. I came to Asheville to to listen to the street performers, to see the street performers, to uh, you know, the the talent just pouring down the streets here in Asheville. So it's a uh, it's good that y'all have a uh, that the city listens to you. Hopefully. Do you have some sort of voice? Well, yeah, it, it's about, it's not about uh, wanting to do whatever we want, wherever we want. It's about <laughs> being part of the conversation that directly affects our lives. And, you know, there's a misconception Absolutely. with that, too, where... Folks are going, oh, well, these guys just don't want to do whatever. And that's, that's absolutely not the case. Um, but we do want to be able to create an atmosphere in which we can also thrive. And it's real important for us, especially if we want to continue to be here. So, <laughs> But Patrick, yes. busking in other cities and busking here, um, you know, as far as busking is concerned, what, what is it that you get out of street performance? Um, well, it started out as a, like I said, I picked, I picked up guitar on the road. So 
busking just started out as a, you know, a place to practice. Where else am I going to practice? But sit down, oh, oh, put out a hat, and <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I mean, I'm booking gigs and stuff now, and I, I still really enjoy pr playing on the street because uh, it just seems. It seems, and this is going to sound really silly, but it, it seems like the, uh, you know, I'm 36 years old now, and it seems like it's the most honest thing I've ever done. <laughs> so uh, I've never never asked for a handout, never looked for anything. I've got a college education. I served a tour in Iraq. I, uh, and this, you know, I mean, this just helps me. And it seems to be, like I said, just probably the most honest thing I feel like I've ever done. I'm, I'm uh, putting myself out there and uh, people are, you know, people tip what they uh, feel, you know, I mean, I'm, it just, it makes sense for me right now in my life. So it seems like a good thing. That's what, uh, that's what it's about, you know, and, and learning and sharing and so on and so forth. Let's hear a tune so that folks know what we're talking about. All right, folks, we've, we've got Pac Patrick Hamilton here. Um, let's, yeah, let's play a tune. Right, now, now, you write a lot of your songs, though, right? Yeah, it's a whole lot easier than learning somebody else's. <laughs> so uh, I, I, wrote, I wrote a little bit uh, following a, you know, a, a dark, depressive time in my past. I, I came into this kind of backwards, but uh, I had a... A family upset, lost my family, and uh, I uh, tried to kill myself, got really depressed, and I uh, just decided to go on the road and uh, got rid of everything I owned and just hit the road. And I picked up guitar along the way, which was really good. Uh, a guy in New Mexico gave me this street name Pax because it meant heels with music, and I just, I wrote a little poetry, and then when I picked up guitar, I started writing songs. <coughs> Here's here's a, one of them. I hope this is in time.
for pity I don't need nothing from you Somewhere down this road I'm someone's feeling like I do Somewhere down this road I'm on someone's feeling just as alone And if I sing loud enough This could be more than just another song You know, the the thing about street performance is that it, it gives you a chance to 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 do a lot of learning and a lot of sitting yeah. in with folks and a lot of floating around and a lot of teaching too because teaching is a is a really great way to to learn in yourself, you know. Yeah, yeah. You teach somebody that it ingrains that in your mind I haven't gotten to the teaching part yet but I certainly learn a lot by traveling around listening to meeting people and listening to other people that play guitar guitar I think is a really common instrument to play so uh, I get the advantage of watching a lot of people and listening to them and trying to develop my uh, learn myself trying to develop my own skill I guess yeah yeah totally totally um do you think that that perhaps street performance in general is is kind of continued you on your path? Like, do do you feel that you would have traveled as long as you had if it weren't for street performance? I don't know about the traveled part, but I'm not sure if I'd be alive. I wasn't too smart when I set out. I mean, I was smart <laughs> as far as like army smart and uh, and like, but uh, I w I was kind of. You know, I kind of came into it, like I said, in a bad way, and I just kind of took off on the yeah. road. And uh, <laughs> I uh, I don't know if I would have been able to eat. <laughs> I don't know if I really would have survived, because I definitely haven't asked for anything in four years. I haven't, you know, I just, I, I just didn't, couldn't do that, whatever, put the pride aside or whatever. But uh, um, picking up a guitar really helped me emotionally mentally and definitely physically because I got to sit down and practice guitar and let all this stuff flow out of me and uh, sing and uh, and uh, you know I always make enough I don't I don't really go where the money is but I go where I want and I always make seem to make enough so it definitely that my guitar has paid my or fed me <laughs> enough fed me enough got me down the road Gotcha. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, sometimes I tell people that for me, traveling saved my life, but that music saved me from traveling. No. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, because there was a time within my travels where it was kind of a survival thing. It was like, you know, I've I've got to sit down here. I got to eat. If I won't, you know, yeah. you have to take care of yourself. And yeah. And music did that for me. Yeah, music does that for me. Like I said, it definitely more than just physically. I mean, people tip, and uh, I always make enough to eat and get by on. And uh, also, like I said, just music, just it as a way to write all that out, write all that uh, everything, good, bad. It's just a way to get it out. So. Feed your stomach and your soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all around good, healthy meal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, f for a lot of buskers, coming to Asheville is just kind of like one of those meccas that they take at some point. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, I'm kind of curious that, you know, on your way here, did you run into a lot of performers who had come here and that knew Asheville and knew some of the folks here? And were, were they telling you, you know, where to go and what to do? And Well, I at one point had a list of people from... Uh, New Orleans, Birmingham, Florida, Chattanooga. I at one point had a list of everybody that when I told them why I was heading this direction, well, uh, there's the Busker Broadcast, and all of them 
said, uh, I can't remember all their names, but they all said to say hi, Abby. <laughs> they all said, tell her, I, tell the spoon lady I said hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you know, because Asheville is just one of those spots, you know, and we trade a lot of performers with New Orleans. That's a pretty consistent thing yeah, for us. Yeah, pretty good place to hear music, too. Especially winter to summer. You know, our seasons are almost exact opposites, and so it, it kind of works that way. And uh, so we have this really strong New Orleans influence here, along with our our influence from our regional music and our old time that kind of come. And so it's it's kind of a nice eclectic mix of all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I'm really happy with the downtown area. Seems really small, but it, there's a whole lot of performers to see. I saw three human statues this weekend, <laughs> like three three people doing that, and uh, you know a trumpet and a uh, um, James with the uh, with the with, with the cello with and the, the cello, flutes. with the cello and yeah, James was in a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that was great stuff. It, it, we jammed out a little bit. It's yeah. cool. Everybody here is really uh, nice, and there's just such a mecca of talent and all kinds of people, all kinds of different instruments. It's good. I'm glad I came here. I just needed an excuse. <laughs> I just needed needed to make my way up here. Well, you can always make the broadcast an excuse. <laughs> um. Yeah, so you're kind of coming in on a on a hectic week, you know, having to do with public space and public space ordinance. Um, as you were in other towns coming here, did you ever have an issue with with oh public space, like being being told you couldn't play or had to be somewhere, or stand up or sit down or any of that? You know, uh, three years and something of busking all over the country, and and uh, I, I really make tracks. I've been all over the place, and um, there's. It's there's a lot of confusion of things. There's people that have done. You see what works and what doesn't, and uh, not a whole lot of what works, but definitely a whole lot of what doesn't is what stands out. It seems to the bad mistakes stand out more. But uh, you know, there's places where you got to get a permit. There's places where the permit is free. There's places where the permit costs money. There's there's a uh, areas where you're allowed to busk in some cities, and there's you know, and then New Orleans. There's they close off Royale Street or whatever for the performers during the, you know, so um, I'm just kind of taking it all in at this point. I don't really have an uh, opinion on any, I, I'm not the guy to decide what's, what's, what works and what doesn't, but I, I really, uh, I really hope the best for Asheville. <laughs> I hope the performers stay. <laughs> I don't want to see little outlined spots <laughs> where, where, uh, where certain bands are booked and certain bands, you know. Uh, well, have have you personally ever been in an area that took permits to to play music on? Screen? Oh yeah, uh, one time in uh, Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, Savannah, Georgia. They uh, they have a. You go down to the guy told me, uh, but my story is always different. Though, so the the cop in the park told me, I'm just gonna let you know how it goes around here, and I smiled and I smoked a cigarette and listened to him and he said you got to go down to the uh you got to go down to this building on Wednesday and uh you, you pay $15 I think it was and you get you a permit and they'll they'll tell you where you can play down by the waterfront or whatever and I waited for him to finish and I said okay well I'm going to tell you this is what I'm going to do I'm going to go right across there to that park where everybody is <laughs> on the market and he goes, you, you shouldn't, you can't play there. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna sit down, open my case, and I'm gonna play some songs, and uh, and then uh, I'm gonna go down to the McDonald's and get me something to eat off the tip money, and then I'm gonna get back on the highway and leave. And he just kind of nodded his head and goes, okay, and left. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I mean, I don't want to say it works for everybody, but I just. You just told him what you needed to do. And <laughs> this is what I have to do. I'm not. He's like, so you're not going to be here Wednesday. I'm like, I'm not going to be here Monday. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm passing through, and so, and I think that's how I skate a whole lot uh, with with rules and regulations. Certain places is, I just play music that's not offensive to anybody. I don't block the sidewalk. I I pick up after myself, and uh, and uh, I I practice guitar until I, I got what I need to eat and get down the road, you know? And those are all really, really important parts of street performing, folks. You know, you know picking up, up up after yourself and, and just uh, just being a a good citizen and a good neighbor. 
when it comes yeah. to businesses. Yeah, and, you, you know, add locals. to the place you're at. Add, I always try to add to because I get so much out of it. I go see the sites in Asheville. I want to contribute something to it, you know. Right. I don't want to junk it up or nothing. Right. Yeah, and th- there is some confusion, too, um, nowadays and especially uh, over the last few years. Um, we, we do have a rainbow gathering that's, that's pretty close to Asheville at this time. And um, I do love my, my traveling counterparts. I will, I will always love my traveling brothers and sisters. But um, there are sometimes issues that come with folks who stand out a little bit in the crowd. And sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to do with whether or not these folks are rude. Um, although some, sometimes folks are. Um, no excuses there. Um, you know, but for the most part, a lot of this community, including the busker community, the street community, everybody else who's just kind of out and about on a daily basis, the folks that work downtown, um, we're a bunch of wild cards, <laughs> you know, and... And it's good for us to get to know each other and talk to each other and learn where each other come from. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we do this show. And so, you know, I, I urge um, listeners and, and other folks to stop and, and to stop and talk to um, not only our street performers, but also other folks that you see among the street that, that maybe you hadn't talked to before that you've seen a few times and... And kind of get to know folks around you. And you know, I know, I know whether you're busking or not. I know everybody appreciates a uh, a good look in the eye or a hi, how are you? And it just yeah. it, a, a little bit goes a long way <laughs> when you've exactly. uh, been on the road or exactly. Moving around. Yeah, and and another thing, and it's hard to explain this and talk to people about this, but the the presence of travelers is means that the the city that you're in has a healthy art scene. That's what that means. Right. That's a uh, side effect of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why else would a... Yeah. Very, very true. Now, now anytime you want to play another song, well, you just let me know. All right. Well, I'm thinking of one, and it's, it's real <laughs> simple, but it's a... I, I told somebody I'd play it on here, so... Uh, I mentioned the uh, the um, like you know I went on the road, gave up a bunch of antidepressants and hit the road with the guitar and kind of the name Pax, the street name I was given was uh, Heels with Music. So um, and partly I really liked it because this is a uh, well this is the first song I ever wrote. So it's called Hurt No More. Sun coming up, my head over the lake. I'm breathing cold air in, and as last night fades, scissor tails flip against the blue, blue sky. And trees of green shadow my eyes, and my mind's troubles ripple far from the shore. I hurt no more. Guitar, feet, toes barely and touching the water. Sound and lights flicker in space, and she sings songs about finding peace. And my mind's troubles ripple far from the shore. I hurt no more. I hurt no more. Couple of beers shooting pool at the bar Hanging with friends who don't know who you are Outside the night is drifting off the lake It's easy now to smell the coming of change And my mind's troubles ripple far 
far from the shore I hurt no more I hurt no more Waves crash against the sand heart skips a beat as she grabs my hand I'm curled up close and I can hear her breathe I close my eyes and I begin to dream <laughs> I don't know, it's a real simple song but it was the first song so. Simple is good Simple is good I wouldn't you know, somebody somebody said to me once about music um, that it's it's the notes that you don't play that are the most important. <laughs> Have you heard that before? Uh, about keeping music it, simple. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I have. I just uh, <laughs> I heard it differently. I heard it like something about uh, you want to strum the only the strings you want to play, and I still strum them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Music, 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 folks. Uh, there is no right or wrong way. Uh, mm. Although, you know, as a, a self-proclaimed music historian, perhaps people might disagree. But, uh, but you know, as far as it goes to for playing music on the street, and, you know, we're talking about practice and learning and sharing and having that that village green atmosphere when it comes to our public space and that's what's important that yeah um so as you've been traveling you do a lot of writing and oh, yeah, and yeah. whatnot you know and write a uh, lot of poems that turn into songs sometimes. yeah and, and i also saw you uh putting together some postcards oh i love yeah i'm old school with that i i started a postcard list uh like well like three years ago and uh it just got too extensive too big a bunch of little scraps of paper so this year i started a new one and it's already like four pages i just i like yeah i like to get a postcard every and i have this weird thing i don't like to mail them unless i'm still in that town so the best thing for me to do is to buy a 75 cent 50 cent dollar postcard and uh i'll 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 get three or four of them and I'll send them to different people and I'll I'll send them out from where I'm at. I used to before I had like a mail before I had a list of people to send it to. I used to like go to the library and Google Earth and I'd just look up people random addresses across the country and I'd write them a poem and I'd send it to them. I'm pretty sure there's some people in Michigan still right now going with a, a postcard on their fridge going, "Who do we know in Florida?" Who, who who do we know in New Orleans? Like I just can't. I don't. <laughs> but no, my friends really like getting them. I'm slow. I'm I'm getting into the Facebook thing. I'm slowly learning the the whole keeping up with the Facebook thing. And I made a web page up, and I'm trying to get all some internet presence or whatever. But uh, hope I get recorded by the end of the year or whatever. Some I don't know things, but. Which is really nice. It really is nice, and it's a sign to me that uh, <laughs> that I'm I'm wanting to take this seriously. I'm wanting to like really. I'm really enjoying the music. Is what it means to me. It's kind of like a making a commitment. I'm really enjoying the the guitar, so I'd like to uh, I'd like to uh, record some stuff and get it out there and stuff. But uh, that's cool. <laughs> Have you put together any books or anthologies of your poetry um, or thought about doing so? Oh, my gosh. I've thought about it, and I've had a couple of friends that did. Uh, a friend of mine did this this last year, and it's a really good book, but uh, it's just such a project. Like I feel like I'd have to be somewhere, and I'd have to... Talking about Facebook, I was watching my friend that just put together a book, her Facebook posts of strings, connected dots, and thumbtacks in and which poem goes where and how she wants to lay out the book and everything and it's a really good book now that it's out but no I've had a I've won a couple of poetry contests I've had a couple of little things published here and there um I hadn't been writing poetry for all that long but uh 
Um, I'm learning more about it. Like I said, I go into everything backwards. It's kind of the same as guitar. I started writing songs before I really started learning anything about guitar. <laughs> so. Well, do you have any thoughts on the folks that we see out doing the, the busking with poetry, typing poems for oh, folks? Oh, like, uh, well, there's my friend Phil in town, Phil Krell. And uh, he, he's, you also have Will Frank and, and Eddie Will, Cabbage. And, uh, yeah. You got, man, you got several here. It's like everything yep. really unique. That's why I think people come to Asheville is you find really unique street performers, and you've got three of them. You know, the statues, the poetry, the... Uh, anybody good on a, you know, it's, uh, but yeah, um, I've never really, I'd never really thought about busking with the poetry thing. Oh, I lie. I did. I, I sat down with a friend of mine and played guitar one time. He played guitar and I, I read poetry, but, um, I'm not as good at the on the spot stuff like those guys, but, um, I think music, just, somebody came up to me after a poetry reading one time and I wish God, I could remember what country he was from or what the name of the what the word was. But he told me one time, and his translator relayed to me that he he was trying to say that that the word for poet and and what we call singer songwriter, what we call like a, were the same in, in his language. In his language, yeah. and uh, the only thing that gave it away was the context in which it was used. Right, the context lets you know whether it meant someone with a guitar or an instrument. Or whether it meant just a poet, and That's so I think they're really close. Oh yeah, they're really similar. So definitely, definitely. Some, some make better songs, and some writings make better poems. <laughs> but they're very closely related, for sure. Now, now, when you do writing, do you ever? Do you, I mean, do you have a certain process for it? Do you? kind of come up with a melody sometimes and then put words over it or do you do you generally put put melody over the words that's the question it isn't it for like everybody happens? that's that's the question isn't it for everybody everybody what that comes writes first, songs the chicken which, or the which egg? comes first the melody or the words or yeah. the tune of the um well i'm learning at guitar so so i still pick up something here and there or i'll play a cover or i'll listen i'll listen to people and i'll pick up something new or something stands in my head i might have that in the background but i i feel as if i write like i breathe i kind of write all the time i kind of journal I've, I've really taken to doing little blurbs just things to help me remember if i want to write a story later or a poem or whatever just comes out um sometimes it meshes up with a tune and sometimes it doesn't sometimes i'll play a tune and just play it over and over again until i come up with some words just so i can keep the tune just to remind me how it goes and um sometimes i've got plenty of words ready i just need a tune so uh i don't know i think i think it goes both ways i think it just depends Yep, yep. <laughs> I'm really vague with my answers, huh? <laughs> really general and vague. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be general and vague. I I kind of tend to be a general and vague person myself. The, the answer is I write whether I have a tune or not. So there's the answer. Is that right? Whether I got... Yeah, you definitely seem <laughs> seem to me to be a writer first. You know, it seems to be like... Um, that's what I'm comfortable with. The one with. thing you pivot your, your music around. And um, and that's that's a pretty good thing. That's an awesome thing, you know. Well, I'm uh, totally not comfortable that you yet have that kind of with uh, with people, say a musician, my musician friend, or this and that or whatever. I'm like I'm not a, I know very little about music theory. I'm learning this and that. I know chords because they're A B C D E F G. <laughs> I mean, that's really not <laughs> difficult. But uh, I'm learning this and that. But uh, uh, singer songwriter, I'm okay with. But writers, yeah, yeah, probably first. Well, folks, uh, I'm going to be taking Patrick with me over to Mr. Chris Rodriguez's house. Uh, maybe Chris Rodriguez can sit down and <laughs> be picking some tunes and, <laughs> and uh, having, having a good a, time there. He's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, and, um, you know, and that's, that's part of what busking is, is learning from the people around you. And um, I've been really, really blessed to be playing with some talented folks and to be working amongst so many talented buskers 
in Asheville and get to sit and wait on these folks and listen and you know you learn music just by listening oh yeah not only from playing and watching but by listening too um, you got another tune I uh I do you said good and I <laughs> I remembered okay so uh somebody told me Asheville loves a train song so this is actually my train song um <laughs> Pacific headed westbound, howling at the moon. Oh, a blanket of stars and my guitar. That's when I wrote this tune. The Midnight Express will get you there if you're having a worry, a reason to care. Headed down the track, steady as she goes. It's like heavy metal. Sacramento and a railway man said you gotta go I heated up iron till the trail went cold riding heavy metal rock and roll heavy metal rock and roll it shakes and quakes rattles my soul I wasn't born on a train but that's how I'll go thanks to heavy metals rock and roll time I hear a whistle blow I think you're catching out and wonder where it's going I may sing like some country folks but I love heavy metal rock and roll heavy metal rock and roll it shakes and quakes rattles my soul I wasn't born on a train but that's how I'll go thanks to heavy metal Rock and roll. <laughs> Rock and roll. Uh, I wrote, I actually wrote that my first three train my first I wrote the chorus the rock and roll part um, heavy metal rock and roll my first train ride it was from uh, Grand Junction Colorado to uh, uh, well near Salt Lake City till we got thrown off. Um, and it was so it was through the Rocky Mountains, and I had this story. I wanted one of those cool train pictures, like all my friends have, where they're walking off into the sunsets with the mountains in the background, a guitar slung, and they're walking down the top of the train. And I was like, "Hey," I told my friend Wiley, you know, Howl at the Moon. That's where that comes from too. But uh, uh, I told him to take a picture of me, and I was walking down the train, and uh, it hit one of those little points where it goes real slow, and then it just goes. J-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-j-
you know, as Americans, we, we kind of want to look at that classic hobo idea and romanticize it. Romantic, we romanticize the freedom. We romanticize the scenery. Oh, that, I romanticize the hell out of it anyway. <laughs> well, well, you know, but we do this, but then a lot of Americans, when face-to-face with folks from the traveling culture, are, are taken aback. They're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm totally fine with daydreaming about this, but, but I don't want it in my bubble. Yeah. And, and and it kind of creates this this kind of weird social question mark about travelers. You know, people are either really, really super intrigued or they're really, really appalled. I guess, I guess it's the writer mentality in me. I've, I've kind of seen myself forever. You know, I was homeschooled. And then by the time I went to uh, university, I was I was way younger than everybody else. And then I went out and had a career early on. And uh, I just, I've always kind of had this outsider. I guess it's the writer, what made me good, what made me enjoy writing is a spectator of like, you know, just getting to know everyone. I just, I don't know, I, I have a hard time with judging people for anything. I just like to get to know them. You can't love people in slices. <laughs> I'm getting silly now. Uh, but <laughs> that's my favorite uh, Sean Connery quote from King Arthur. <laughs> he goes, you can't love people in slices. Like, no, go, you can't. Uh, I enjoy meeting everybody, but yeah, the reality of what fits me has never been a, there's never really, I haven't really found anything that fit me as well as, uh, well, I haven't really found anything that fits me real well that's doable right now. So What I had found about the traveling culture is that I felt immediately accepted. You know, it, it was, it was you know, all these, all these travelers and whatnot. It didn't matter what I looked like or what I wore or how I smelled. It <laughs> didn't matter. They were happy to have me as a friend. Open arms, come and sit with us. I don't care how messed up you are. I don't care if you've had bad dreams. I don't care if you feel like you're oh, going yeah. down to the farthest pits of despair. You're my friend. Come sit with me. And that that was the best thing ever. an accepting community for oh, sure. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I think anyone traveling any which way, uh, you know, might have differences of opinion or, or which, uh, whichever way. I mean, we might clash, but... Uh, overall, I would, I would definitely safely say this is me picking a side, picking a decision, is an opinion, is a they're very accepting community for sure, and uh, yeah, and you know, and at the time when I first started hitting the road, I felt like nobody wanted me at that time. You know, we were talking, you know, because I left for you know similar stuff. It was you know my, I was I had hit bottom. Yeah. And that's why I started traveling. I, I needed to find that freedom to, I had to find, find myself. Right. I had some pretty big questions that needed answered. Like yeah. uh, I had lost faith right. and I had lost uh, any kind of, well, with purpose came, fi- or with faith came purpose, you know, because religion and that kind of gave me a purpose um, or at least told me that there's a reason to believe that there is a purpose. Yeah. And then I, I found so much senseless, just, you know, so much, just whatever. I'd hit bottom too. And, and I went on search for some sort of purpose. And, uh, you know, um, and the best I can say is that first year of traveling, I found that so many people uh, created purpose. If it wasn't dictated to them by, by religion or spiritual beliefs or some way of life or lifestyle they had chosen then it was uh they created purpose out of just living the be here now philosophy of the buddhist right the just living on purpose and uh so it, i think that's what keeps me moving too but is is i would gotta have you know there's for me to be entertained come like like that distracted child still but for me to be entertained for me to take a job it's 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 got to be something i mean i'm well qualified for a bunch of jobs uh but I generally take them when there's something I haven't done that intrigues me. You know, I haven't done that yet, haven't experienced that. And uh, traveling, there's always some place that looks, uh, I haven't been there yet. You know, I, and uh, 
I don't, yeah. I don't wear a, a path very much. Like, there's not too many places I go. A couple of, I'll, pro- I'll probably return to Asheville at some point. But uh, there's there's very few places in the United States I like to see a second time because there's just so much to see. There's so much to do. And I love meeting new people. Um, I guess that's what keeps me going at this point is finding purpose is just there's too many interesting things that I've got I've got to I've got to got to see what that's all about got to see what this is about got to see who that is <laughs> do you do you feel um do you feel as if your purpose is ever changing um oh i th- i think yeah yeah we're getting deep now uh, welcome to Welcome to Busker Abby, Broadcast. We, Busker we talk broadcast. about the stuff that matters. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> Come on down, lay down on the couch. We'll talk this out. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the nearest street corner near you, we're discussing philosophy and the meaning of life. No, no purpose. Uh, yeah, purpose changes with. Uh, for me, it it, it changes with. Uh, I get what out. Of, I get something out of it. And I get. I get what I need out of it. I. You, discover and I don't know. you start seeing <laughs> new goals form kind of oh yeah yeah that's for, what it was for me for every place i go there's three other places i find out about that i'm thinking of, of visiting and by the time i leave that town after the weekend there's five places on my list that i'm going to go yeah. <laughs> you know it's a never ending it's like the the question that leads the answer leads to five other questions you know <laughs> Well, what did you do before you you were traveling? Oh gosh, that's a long story. I uh, I uh, I went to school to ballet, so I was trained in classical ballet, and I I went up. I had taught dance for ten years. I taught uh, ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop, whatever, mostly ballet though. And then um, I uh, served a tour in the army. Spent a few years in the army. Um, and uh, got a lot. I found it easy to getting a to get a lot of. Uh, I went to university. I went to college, so I found it really easy with that, with schooling and and the the uh, the army. Um, found it real easy to get like um, the easiest jobs to get were like heavy op- heavy equipment operator machines like that and stuff, because I drove an Ace for a little while, which is kind of like a. Um, kind of like a a bulldozer with three tons of armor and a grenade chute but it's pretty much the same thing so uh, I'd get jobs with companies like Acme and Acme Brick and here and there I liked factory jobs there for a little while because you get every weekend off and I got to spend it with my family and uh, you know I'd, I, I, I guess I just found most of my fulfillment at that point at later in my life it, with a uh, family and then uh and then that all changed and i needed something new obviously couldn't live with the way things were going um so for me to go on needed to find something and that led to the road four years ago and i'm still walking down roads there's a road leading into portland i'm gonna hit in august that turns 100 this year I'm so excited. That'll be real cool. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, the country's first scenic highway. So, that's com- the first part was completed in uh, 1916, and I'm like, ah, I'm kind of into walking down roads. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk down a hundred year old road. <laughs> that sounds really awesome. I hope you take lots of pictures. Yeah. We have we have a little bit of time if you're wanting to do another song. Um, before our break now and you're you're we're going to sit around and discuss politics after the break so you know you feel if you feel like discussing busker politics feel free to hang oh, out busker politics yeah we're going to be talking about what's going on on wednesday S- sounds like an oxymoron uh, no i'm just kidding no. well that's I'm the thing kidding. is that busking is one of those very very it organic is. things and the more yeah. restrictions you put on it the more it suffocates and, yeah, the, and it's hard to tell yeah city staffers it's since. a noble endeavor to try to organize and and it's, orchestrate it's street hurting performing hurting kittens <laughs> it's hurting kittens come on come on over here over here <laughs> Okay. Oh, don't, don't scratch on that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this one. Um, 
this this song. I, I'm pleased with it because I, I I'm liking right now that my songs all turn out different than the last one. That makes me happy because some of them are bluesy, some of them are country, some of them are I don't know what this one is, but I liked this one. And I can't play it on the street very much because it's a little too quiet. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I think it's awesome, and I think that having this discussion coming up here uh, about all of our busker politics is going to be an interesting one. I, I feel as if you're a talented individual, it might be fun to hear your input. Um, folks, we will be posting a few videos and miscellaneous, so um, if you're interested in getting a hold of Patrick Hamilton for 
for booking even if you are somebody who wants to book this individual and 